What is up, everybody? I'm back. It is August 6th, 2019, which means we are two days away from the start of the preseason for the Seattle Seahawks, so I got to get back on the horse. I got to start making videos. I took uh, some time off from the videos after the draft because I said what I needed to say about that, and at that point, <clears throat> there isn't really a lot to discuss. I wanted to let some things build up. I wanted to let some things happen. <clears throat> so, we've got a couple of weeks worth of training camp. We've got off-season buzz. We've got, we had some things to digest over the past couple of months. And I've been trying to keep my ear to the ground on as much of it as I can. Not as much of it as I necessarily would have liked, but I've been following the beat writers. I've been following the reports coming out of camp. And... Basically, if you're going to big picture it before the preseason starts, because uh, obviously, like I said, we're not really going to know much of anything until the preseason. And even then, we're not going to know that much until the regular season. But from the camps, from what I heard, from what I got out of Twitter, the beat writers, the people who were actually at camp this year did not include me. I did not go this year. I've uh, been a few years since I went, actually. But um the big picture for these Seattle Seahawks is offense good, defense not so good. And, you know, those are the two units that play against each other. So who knows how much any of that might mean. But um, there are, of course, exceptions to both rules. Um, if, if you were following things like Russell Wilson, how he looked in camp, he looked great. Chris Carson, Rashad Penny both looked great. We looked deep at running back. Um, the tight ends are playing well. The healthy offensive line with Brown and Dupati and Britt and Fluker and Effetti, they look really good. Uh, of course, Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright are going to be the two of the best linebackers in franchise history. We know Bradley McDougal's a good player. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we already kind of knew. I'm not worried about Wilson. I'm not worried about the running backs. Not worried about Lockett. Not worried about the healthy offensive line. If the offensive line stays healthy, I'm not really too worried about them. Uh, not worried about the linebackers. Not worried about McDougal. Not worried about Michael Dixon. But I was trying to keep an eye on you know everything in between that because right off the bat, we have a significant concern for the 2019 Seahawks. Specifically, it is with that front four. So, one of the negative things that came out of camp is big one, number one, Jerron Reed of a domestic violence suspension, six games, going to miss the first six games of the year. Uh, won't have him for September and part of October. And um, he's our best guy on the defensive line right now. He's our best defensive tackle by a uh, country mile. And we are now depending heavily on guys like Nazir Jones and Puna Ford and Earl Mitchell and Quentin Jefferson to play more snaps than we might have wanted. And I like some of those guys. I love Puna Ford, but that's not what we needed. <clears throat> and then the other day, just to rub salt in it, LJ Collier probably going to miss the preseason with some kind of sprained ankle. Now, I was already concerned about the defensive line. It was a position that we did attack a little bit in free agency. It was a position that we drafted at a little bit. But I felt like we could have paid a little more attention to it. And now things are really going to get tested because we got no read for six games. Collier is missing the preseason at minimum, I think. Um, you know, some people have said this, some people have said that, but my sense is that LJ Collier will miss all four preseason games and possibly be ready for week one, but uh, he's a rookie, so whatever little you were expecting of him as a rookie, that little had to go down a little bit when you learned that he was going to miss the preseason. If anybody needed reps, it was probably him, so to rush the passer for the first six games of the year, we are looking at Anza, Ezekiel Anza. Just cross our fingers, he stays healthy. We're looking at Cassius Marsh, Rasheem Green, 
throw a little Nazir Jones in there, maybe a little Barkvarius Mingo, Quentin Jefferson, Brandon Jackson. It gets rough quick. There are a couple guys in the, that I just listed. Al Woods, I'll throw Al Woods in there a little bit too. <clears throat> there are a couple guys in there who you're like, yeah, that guy's really good. There are a couple guys who you look at and go, yeah, he's okay. Maybe even one or two guys who likes he's got a lot of potential, like Rasheem Green. I like Rasheem Green. I like Nazir Jones. But to say that that group of pass rushers fills you with confidence, uh, you might be fooling yourself a little bit. So awful news there. I was going to say our pass rush would be adequate this year with a full season of Reed and a full rookie campaign out of Collier, who... I wasn't in love with anyway. I like Collier, but I don't believe he's ever going to be a great pass rusher, and he certainly won't be much of one this year with um, limited reps. So that's the big problem I see with this team right now. That was the main bad news that I picked up coming out of this training camp. Um, what else? So contract-wise, good news there. So let's move into some good news on this defense. The linebacker spot, Bobby Wagner, no dramas, no worries. Bobby Wagner signed for another four years after this one, I think. Maybe it's four years including this one, but it wasn't some five-year extension that would pay him until he was like, you know, 55 years old. I'm exaggerating, but <clears throat> it wasn't a huge long-term deal to where I was like, oh shit, we're going to pay him when he's washed up a whole bunch of money. We're going to owe him $40 million when he's not very good anymore. Nothing like that. I am confident that Bobby Wagner is going to give us four, three or four more good seasons. The contract will carry us to that point, and when we get there, we can make a decision, but I am not stressed about that contract. That is a fair contract for a top two linebacker in the league right now. So uh, I know Bobby's nursing uh, some surgery recovery right now. I know he's not practicing. No worries there. I'll worry about it when we get reason to worry basically so there was some good news there Bobby's taken care of and then we look at the secondary which I'm intrigued by I've heard good things about the safeties Delano Hill who has not done much while he's been here I kinda like what I'm hearing about what he's doing in camp so he'll get another chance Marquis Blair he's been hurt a few times but when he's out there, I keep hearing good things. Like, he's the best rookie on the defense. And that's, you know, saying something given that Collier was there for a while. So, I feel like there is potential for us to replace Tedrick Thompson with somebody who's more of a playmaker. And I don't hate Tedrick, but I think we can do better. Maybe it'll be Blair. Maybe it'll be, you know, Marwin Evans. He's been showing up on the training camp radar as somebody who has a nose for the football. And then finally, let's go to the corners, um, because it's it's going to be about the defense this year. I have confidence in this offense, as long as they stay reasonably healthy. But uh, the corners, I have mixed thoughts on. I've heard mostly good things about Trey and Shaquille, and those are the two guys who we're really depending on. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to get a decent nickel corner out of, you know, Akeem King and Nico Thorpe and some of these rookies and walk-ons that we bring on. And one thing that happened, and I see this from both sides, we picked up Deshaun Shedd, the Lions. I don't think he ever played for the Lions. I'm not sure. I, he got cut, didn't work out, he got hurt, he had injury problems, didn't work out in Detroit. We picked him up. On the plus side, I like getting Deshaun Shedd back. He's a good player. He was good for us. And, um, you know, I, he was a guy I was sad to lose, and it's cool that we get to get him back after not very long at all. But the other concern I have now is, does that say something about the cornerbacks we have in-house? That we would go out and get a guy who the rest of the league seems completely uninterested in. I think the Lions had to eat a pretty significant, um, unless I'm wrong, I think he signed a significant free agency deal. I think the Lions had to eat a lot of money to let him go, and it doesn't seem like anyone else wanted him, so... Basically, my concern is, what does this say about the guys we have? Are they not playing as well as we were hoping? That's not really what I'm hearing, but maybe, you know, Pete Carroll has seen something. So, when the season starts, I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on Trey and Shaq. Because um, Trey is going into his second year after 
a rookie year that was way, way better than he had any right to be, given his situation. And Shaquille, you know, he had a couple bad games last year. I don't think he took the step forward that a lot of people were anticipating. So we're going to keep a close eye on those guys, and we're going to learn a lot. And if we end up throwing Shed out there, because Flowers and Griffin are not playing up to expectations, then it'll be nice that we have them. But it also throws a big wrench in the, you know, two, three-year plan for this Seahawks team if Flowers and Griffin don't pan out. So that's the defense because, you know, once again, I just see this as a year being about what does the defense give us? We have great linebackers. We have a couple good players on the line. We have good players in the secondary. But can they come together to be great as a unit? That's, that's my question. And um, that's the main thing I'm going to be watching in the preseason. Like I said, the only thing on this offense that's, to me, going to really be worth watching is we're going to try to figure out this thing on offense, because uh, at receiver specifically, because quarterback, we got maybe the worst backups in the league, and we've got one of the best starters in the league, so we know exactly where we're at. Uh, running back, we are deep, and we are good at running back. Offensive line, if they stay healthy... Uh, we're great. If they get a little dinged up, it's okay. We have some depth. Although Jamarco Jones has not exactly been showing up in uh, preseason to the level of hope. And if the offensive line gets really injured, then you know we're going to be back to where we were with uh, Tom Cable, maybe. But uh, receiver, you know, we're down to Tyler Lockett, and then a bunch of maybes. Maybe David Moore will improve on his rookie on his uh, first season here where he played made some big plays but as the season went on kind of got faded out of the playbook um jaron brown somewhat dependable decent backup option should catch a couple touchdowns should be good for a few hundred yards and then you know dk metcalf that's the guy that everybody is watching including me when we're on offense that's the one guy I really want to know more about and he's been having a great camp he's been the physical specimen that we expected my gut tells me that DK Metcalf is going to make a bunch of big plays this year but I don't think he's going to have a big season I could see him catching some you know 60 yard touchdowns I could see him breaking three tackles and scoring a 50 yard touchdown I could see him catching some jump balls you know moss somebody I don't think he's going to have a 1200 yard rookie season like uh, Randy Moss or Calvin well, not Calvin Johnson, but uh, Anquan Bolden. I, I don't know if I see that. But I do think he'll make some big plays. Amara Darbo, probably his last chance. Uh, Keenan Reynolds. People say some things about Keenan Reynolds. He hasn't had a chance to show it yet. Gary Jennings Jr., my favorite. My personally, the guy who I really like to be a big contributor as a rookie this year. And... Um, that's what I have my eye on going into this preseason because, you know, with each level, you learn more. You learn a little bit in camp, you learn a little bit more in preseason, and then you really start learning stuff in the regular season. So who's going to be there when the lights go, lights go on? That's really what I'm looking at right now with this team. I have a lot of questions on this defense. The read suspension sucks because I'll tell you one thing. What I'm not going to go for anymore are these seasons where we start like 3-3 three and three or 2-4 and four, and then we get hot at the end and we end up winning 10 games or 9 games because we got it together and we started playing get to better in the second half, but we don't win the division because we lost a couple games at the start of the season. Or, you know, we get into the playoffs but we're exhausted because we spent all that energy getting a good second half. And then we're playing on the road in the playoffs. I'm, I'm tired of that. Last few seasons, we finished the season great. But the first half held us back. We had to play in the playoffs on the road. We didn't get the bye week. So, you know, this season, we, have, we open with some winnable games. Obviously, uh, to this team, most every game is winnable. And if we start like 2-4 and four, or 3-3, three and three, then we're not putting ourselves in position to win the division and get a good seed and play in the playoffs at home. And the drawn reach suspension could make or break a couple of those early games. So already I have my guard up, but um, nothing you can do about it now. All right.
I will make another video right before the preseason game Thursday, and um, it's good to be back.